Welcome, my name is Charles Philip Wakolam. When you hear the word mission, or when you hear about missionary diocese, what comes to your mind? Have you ever been to any missionary diocese? Have you been on mission yourself? Well, we are here uh, somewhere in Delta states, uh, between Delta and Bielsa states, in the diocese of Western Izon, Patani to be precise, and um, we want to tell you about this diocese, the missionary diocese of Western Izon. Our sojourn in the Anglican diocese of Western Izon was filled with mixed feelings. The rich nature, the ambience, the people, seemingly peaceful. But something would easily strike you as a stranger in the area. The whole of the place is surrounded by river. Our first point of contact was at the Cathedral Church of the St. Matthew in Patani. Patani is a community in Delta State and a border town between Delta and Bielsa State. A look at the cathedral building and the environment gives a feeling of the financial strength of the diocese and possibly the people of the area. I have a venerable here with me, a senior clergy in the Western Eastern uh, Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. All it's right, a pleasure sir. to be with you. Yes, sir. For uh, let's just meet you. What's your name and tell okay. us about yourself. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Venerable Sunday, Ewu Forama. I'm a clergyman in the Diocese of Western Izo. Uh, by the grace of God, I'm one of the pioneer priests uh, that was uh, ordained uh, by the pioneer bishop of this diocese, the Right Reverend. Uh, Daphne Benjamin Imamezi uh, in the year 2006. I was deacon in 2006. 2007, I was uh, uh, made a priest. By the grace of God, today I'm an archdeacon. You know, some of the dioceses in Church of Nigeria are missionary dioceses. We want to know why this particular diocese is called missionary diocese. But to start off, we would like you to give us a history, brief history of this place. Then tell us what makes it a missionary diocese. Then we'll go from there. Yeah, so of course, yes, there are several missionary dioceses in uh, the Church of Nigeria. And the Diocese of Western Izon in the Bende Ecclesiastical Province is one of the missionary dioceses. Uh, when you talk about mission, it's something that is actually what you don't experience in the urban area. Uh, usually it's a place where many people will not want to go. Uh, usually it's a place where there's so much negligence. Uh, it's a place where really the comfort you desire as a priest or as an individual, they are not there. And that is what you find here in the Diocese of Western Izo. Uh, the Diocese of Western Izo was actually created uh, in the year 2005. And uh, our partner bishop is uh, Bishop Edafe Imamezi. Uh, the diocese is actually made of coastal communities. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the, the spread of the, of the diocese, is 90% water, yeah, 90% water and 10% uh, uh, on land. And uh, most of these uh, communities, the rural communities, uh, villages, camps, and hamlets, uh, most of the communities are not accessible. Uh, the diocese is made up of six local governments, uh, four in Delta State, and two from uh, Bayesa State. But I must mention that here we are, Patani, uh, historically is the place where Christianity started from, uh, migrated to the Isoko area, and also migrated to Onisha. 
historically, uh, Patani is a place where church actually started very early. Uh, from the history available to us, uh, the missionaries, uh, British missionaries, came from Brass about 1820, 1850-something, uh, but they were resisted by the Kabowe Kingdom. Uh, they didn't allow them to come in until when they now have to sign a treaty about 1884 and they were not allowed in and they started work immediately. Uh, the Reverend Art Art Artikin and Reverend Gerard, they started the work. What was the treaty about? Sorry? The treaty they signed. So it was for more of a mutual understanding uh, because the Kabul Kingdom had people who were warriors and uh, they saw it as uh, uh, strangers infringing on their rights coming to their land and they didn't want that and they were very strong populated people they were able to resist the british uh, power uh, but along the line they had an understanding and after that they came uh, right behind me is a building uh, it's a missionary building that was uh, built by reverend proctor in 1904-1905 which is a monument today uh, so the area like i mentioned is not really uh, very much populated with uh, Christianity. Uh, talking about the history of this diocese, uh, as at when this church, this diocese was created, there were two archdeacons, uh, two archdeacons, uh, Patani archdeacon and Isapo archdeacon, and what they used to call Burutu group of churches. Uh, it will interest you that, uh, as at the beginning, when the, this church, this diocese was under Wari diocese. Uh, we're struggling to pay assessment of 600,000 naira. It's quite amazing. Uh, but God, through the work of evangelism, the work of our retired bishop, and the, those who are working with him, uh, several high degrees have now been created and chaperones, and the church has now really grown very well. Thank you. Tell us about the churches in this, especially the churches in these coastal areas. How are they fair? Uh, what is uh, is a flood area, is a river area. How do they fare uh, during um, uh, rainy season when, when floods are at their worst? Uh, so, like I mentioned, it's 90% coastal uh, communities in the coastal area. And um, traveling through, you have to travel with your boats, uh, canoe, most time you have to paddle uh, for hours. And some places you can, have to, you can use a speedboat as well to get to your destination. And uh, the communities, uh, most time, they are more like what you say, island to per se, because uh, uh, what you have is water surrounding the environment. And uh, when it rains, you have uh, the very marshy soil. And uh, as a priest, you have to pull off your shoe, uh, fold your garment, carry your garment up to walk down there. Uh, but there are some places where you, it's upland, uh, for instance, Bomadi, Patani here, is Sampo, Isaba, Bulagyama, Sagbama, is upland. But there are places far inside, uh, close to the sea. Uh, the Baramatu area, the Ogulaha area, Fokados, all of that is waterborne. And you can't get there without speedboats. And there are some in the creeks that you have to uh, go by paddling your boat. And uh, during the dry season, some of them, uh, during the rainy season, when you can't use your boat, maybe the water is not much, you have to wait, walk through the water for hours before you can get to your destination. So that is the terrain. Yeah. I'm hoping we'll be able to visit some of these uh, places. Uh, Sagbama is close by here. Maybe we'll see Sagbama and see what, uh, how they are doing and uh, what the activities are like. I also noticed that um, uh, churches around the, the they have schools within them. How how uh, how is that effective in uh, maybe the evangelism work, evangelical work uh, in this diocese? You know, having schools attached to the churches and how are the schools faring? How are you funding the schools? Okay, so uh, that is one good area we must comment the retired bishop, uh, the right reverend uh, Daffy Benjamin Mabezi, and uh, his wife. Uh, we must give credits to his uh, 
his first wife that died so many years ago, Mrs. Ajiri Imamezi. And uh, after some time, he has to get married to Professor Adeline Igo Imamezi. They have been of great support. And uh, they had this vision that uh, uh, each church should be able to establish a school. And the schools have been established. Uh, most of the Ajikiris, there are schools. And uh, these schools, the model we are running is that they are self-sustaining. It has been uh, a, a very good opportunity for community development. Uh, it has been a very good opportunity to contribute to the community and the, the pupils and students who attend this school, by the grace of God, they are doing very well. Uh, the schools are growing and uh, it has brought, also brought uh, relief to the parents uh, because uh, what they could have gone for you know, some other private schools, paying exorbitant fees, is now moderately offered by the schools. Thank you. What, what would you say are the major challenges that the diocese is facing now if if help is to come, if you are to call for help yeah. uh, uh, from uh, probably the, the, the indigenous in diaspora or even the larger church, what, what, would, what would that be? So this is my personal opinion. Uh, challenges and what can be done, people in diaspora coming to help. Uh, the diocese of Western is on. We have very few indigenous who are priests. Uh, we are currently about 60 priests in the diocese and uh, if I'm correct, about 75% uh, are non-indigene. If I want to be moderate, I can make it 60%. And uh, you know, when you are pastoring the people, you must relate with them in the language that they can't understand. So we need more of our his own brethren uh, coming to the ministry so that we can be able to speak the language and relate with the people. Uh, the language is a barrier. Uh, again, too, I must mention that in the Zon community, uh, there are different dialects of the Zon language. Some of us who have been here, we try to pick a few words and then when we are transferred, we, started, we start struggling again because the dialects differs. Yeah. Another problem we have here is uh, there is all rural communities, so there are no industries, uh, there no, there's no government presence. So we have peasant farmers, fishermen, and so it's difficult for the church to pay assessments uh, because the funding is not there. Uh, a situation where the pastors, I don't need to tell you how much we receive, it's very meager. You don't need to. Yeah, but with the little we receive, we still take off the members. Because so many of them are unemployed, there's no industry, no presence of government, there's no uh, light, uh, light uh, facility, there are no roads, there are no hospitals, there's no water. Uh, painfully, a colleague lost his uh, child some years back because the child was sick, deep down in the creek. And uh, before they could come out, the child could not make it. Uh, but you can imagine if that child was uh, somewhere around, uh, they could have easily taken him to the hospital. So there are no government presence in the diocese of Western Izo. It's a major challenge. Another big challenge we have is transportation. Those who are coming here today, a journey that would have cost maybe 1,000, 1,200, they spent 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. So it's very expensive for us to move around here. It's quite enormous, uh, but I can just mention this few. Thank you. Wow, I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to ask, so how are you surviving? No government presence, basic amenities are handful. How are you doing it? How are you performing the miracles? Interestingly, as challenging as it is, our priests are very fresh. They are looking very well, looking very good. Um, our priests are doing well in spite of these challenges. It's something that is beyond what I can explain. And I can tell you that in this diocese of Western Izon, the finger of God is in this diocese. There are innumerable miracles. 
that takes place in our churches. We see God, I, I, the way God does it is amazing. Walking of miracles, testimonies, healing is our daily experience in our churches in the diocese of Western Israel. So God has continued to show himself. It's like God providing a manna for the children of Israel, moving in the place of the wilderness where there, is, where there was lack. Despite all this lack that we have tried to mention, God has continued to provide and supply our needs. Having seen this, our new bishop, the Right Reverend Victor Bipade Okboru, with the little we have heard about him, uh, we are convinced that wherever Bishop Mamazi stopped, he will continue from there. Uh, we are convinced that God is taking us to a new dimension. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must say all of us from ACNN, we wish you well. And uh, we want to come back to this diocese to hear testimonies and uh, improved facilities, improved everything, and more testimonies on the evangelical work. But before I leave you, sir, um, what would be your advice as an experienced missioner? What will you tell every uh, enthusiastic or every individual enthusiastic about mission and evangelism out there? Okay, an interesting one, and uh, I will gladly say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. That is our experience in the Diocese of Western Israel. For anyone that wants to get involved in missionary work, you have to just make up your mind that your life belongs to Jesus. You care less about your life. You don't care about yourself. In terms of your being alive or not being alive. We travel through the sea. We travel through the rivers. We travel through the creeks. We are exposed to all sorts of things. In the midst of that, God has been with us. With the challenges because our focus is on the kingdom business, He has never failed us. So what I would tell, what I would say to those who I want to encourage people to be involved in mission and as you get involved, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. That is the word of God. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. And that's that. Uh, uh, I remember the words of uh, pri our primate most Reverend Henry in the Cuba during his uh, Thanksgiving after his enthronement as a primate. Uh, he said, the moment he got ordained as a priest, he told his mother, forget me as a son, because my life now belongs to God. Yes, so that is the life of a missioner. From Western Zone, I am saying bye-bye, uh, but not by entirely. We are going to see the churches, so come along. While still in the cathedral premises, we decided to check out the old vicarage built in the year 1904 by missionaries. Wow! This was once a modern structure. Our discussion with a senior clergy in the diocese, Venerable Sunday, opened our eyes to some of the happenings in the diocese. We decided to go see some for ourselves, as much as time would permit. We set out to tour the place on the first day and we were first led to a place called Adagbabiri, a small town in Bayausa. The local church there is St. John's Anglican Church. It is under Sagbama Archdeaconry. Sagbama is another town in Bayasa, also close to Patani. On getting to St. John's Church, the local priest there received us with warmth. He was enthusiastic to lay bare the life he has come to meet in the locality. By the time we got there, the students were already done for the day and leaving to their destinations. Good to meet you, sir. God bless you. Um, you're the vicar of this place, sir. Yeah. What's your name? 
I'm Reverend Canon Sunday Unity Esiola. Reverend Canon Sunday. How is it like in this uh, lovely place? I can see the beauty of nature here, uh, the serene environment, though the sun is really scorching, but <laughs> uh, how, is it, how is it like here? Well, sure, the area is cool, calm, but the challenge we are having in our diocese is a peculiar one. Of the truth, it has not been easy with us, but God on our side, we are managing the work by His grace. That's the key word, God on our side. Let's see the inside, sir. All right. Actually, this is the, the temple, the sanctuary we are using for worship. But because of uh, our few classes we are having, okay. we have to spread some of the classes inside here. Okay, so this is the extension of, of the main of the school. Uh, school oh, okay. Yeah. okay, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's lovely. Cool. So, what's uh, what um, level of school is it? Nursery? Is it primary? We have nursery and primary to secondary school. We ended up in GS, uh, GS3. Oh, we are growing. We are growing. It's a big school. <laughs> uh, but for the now, we are just having GS1. We've not gotten GS2, GS3. Okay, so how is the mission work in this area? Just as I told you, yes. I said the work is very accurate, the tax is very tough. Mm. But the truth is that, I repeat that word again, God on our side, exactly. we are forging exactly. ahead. Exactly. Okay, so if, if I'm to ask, what would be that a need you require in this area to, you know, in furtherance of the work to make the work more smooth actually we will really need an assistance from our bigger churches because the parents of these people they are really struggling they need financial help empowerment in uh, their farm work and other things they are doing in order to enable them to help their children to meet up with the current education standard that we are trying to obtain in our country. Wow. So the, the school, um, is it free or? Oh, not at all. You know, education is very expensive. Of course. When you do that, that means you are not going to make anything out of it. But with our effort, we are still managing the token they are giving to us. If not, if we should go by that, then we cannot operate on this. Of course, that's why it's called mission. Yes. So tell me, this uh, this is Adagba Biri. Did Adagba I get it? Adagba, Adagba Biri. Biri. Yeah. Okay. What local government? This uh, Sagama local government. So what is uh, the common activity in this in this locality? What the is? locality. Yes. Well, uh, when we talk about their occupation. Yes. What are they known for? The people of uh, Sagama and Adagba. They are mainly known for as fishermen. Then and uh, they do farm work, so they are fishermen and farmers. I think I'm going with lots of fish. <laughs> oh, lots of fish! In short, the government they have bastardized our water and everything. Sorry to use that word. Wow. I know some persons they will get this at the 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 the, the, the media. They will they will imagine why is a minister using that kind of word? They've really destroyed our river. Mm. Nothing is there. Again. Do you mind telling us more about that? About that, yes. uh, the oil here have uh, destroyed our fishes. Even to get fish is not easy for us. We even go as far as going out to go and source for fish. We that is having the river at our backyard. That's a major challenge, right? Yeah. It's all right. Uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Cannon. Sunday, Sunday Unity. As you are all right, that's that about um, the church and of course the basic school here. Uh, this is the main school where uh, this the, the main school, but they have extension here because uh, it is not enough. I can see the school is incomplete. There is a work in progress, but uh, academic sessions are ongoing. Well, that's about that. We want to see the environment now. I want to take me to the river bank. Come on.
So we can't uh, get to the main main river. No. Except except to enter Kunu mm. and cross to the other side. Then we walk again. Ah. Mm. So you, you you were saying something about this place? Yes. Yeah, it's dried before, but this time around the water has risen. Okay, because it's when it's yes. So that's why yes, problem. We can't cross over right now. Although I would have loved to. <laughs> Nobody to take us there. While at the river bank, we noticed a woman in her farm right there in the bank. She was harvesting garden eggs. Then we were on our way. Our next stop is Sagbama. One thing I must give the government kudos for in this very place is the fact that the access roads to all the villages around are very good. When we got to the local center in this place, I was touched. I mean, a local parlant in Nigeria says, this life, no balance. I think this is a clear example of life, no balance. This is another station in Western Izon Diocese. Ah, uh, this is the church building. Yes, I told you uh, it is a missionary diocese and this is where uh, the people worship. Uh, let me not tell you what I know. Let me just meet the man here. That you're the curate here. We understand the, the venerable, the vicar of the church is not around now. So we have the curate here. Can you tell us uh, your name? Yeah, my name is Reverend Sam Okay, uh, so this is your church. Wow. Tell me about your worshippers. How do What's, what what is what is the uh, the the atmosphere like on on, on a normal worship day? Uh, okay, uh, let's go, let's go inside. Be tell uh, yeah, as you're telling me. Really, uh, we do come here very early in the morning because uh, once it's getting to afternoon, the place is always not too conducive. It's very hot, and uh, that's why we do come early in the morning. By ten thirty, we are through the service and we go home. And uh, that's how we're managing here for now. So, what is the atmosphere like when you're worshiping? Like uh, uh, worshippers, when? How do they feel worshiping in this country? Okay, well, we try to uh, we try to we try to make ourselves comfortable for now, trusting God for a better place in the near future. That's how we have um, blocks at the uh, from the building in, in a very short while. We have the. Uh, uh, a permanent structure mm -hmm. okay. where we usually enjoy our services. But for now, we are we, we, we thank God and uh, God is helping us. Really. Yes, God is helping us. So show me around. Sir. Okay. I want to see. I want to see the environment. Okay. Okay. So the church has farm. Uh, this is uh, like yes, uh, one of the economic importance of the environment. Yes. This is you you perform farming activities. Is, yes. it, is it only cassava? I can see cassava. Yes, cassava and potato and cucumber. Though we just harvested those ones recently. When when the rainy season is in full force, how is the condition of this place? Yeah, <coughs> right now we are enjoying the place because flood has not come by September. We evacuate the place. Uh, leave like the place. You leave we the... leave the environment. Both the pastor, the members for for that period, we live here to a better place where we can actually uh, have. You you uh, have another place? No, we don't have a place. We worship in the market square there. Whoa. Market square, market square. <laughs> uh, market because square. of so flood, flood uh, actually. It takes over the whole place. It takes over the whole place. Wow. Is that is that the water level? I'm yeah, 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 that's the water level there. That's the water level. So if so if you look if you look you see a line on the wall let's let's get there let's get there this is serious <laughs> so this is the water level wow wow so for you to come here during that time you have to uh, 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 use a canoe or you if you can swim 
<laughs> ah, no, we can't, we can't even attempt that because it will be a risk on our side. Uh, because one can get drowned and uh, that yes, is off. Yes. So, so we don't risk so, that. Uh, every, every, no, 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 not any kind of uh, habitation uh, no. uh, will exist here during the flood. Nobody, nobody can stay no here. No, at all. Because the buildings are around. So. Everybody here, they move from here. Everybody here, they move. So this is like uh, a, a, a constant lifestyle for the people of yeah. this place. Every year they have to move. They keep yes, they keep moving uh, out of their place. And but can can anything be done? Actually, this is actually a question for the government. If something can be done about the flood and about the people of this place, but that's not what we can answer here. I can see some blocks there. So, does a plan to to, to raise an edifice here? Yeah. Okay, okay. God is helping us. That's yes. your word, and I I, I enjoy my faith with you, sir. Oh, no problem. No problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wow. Forgive me, but my mood was a bit down leaving this chapel. I thought about what a typical service would look like in this environment. I thought about the people. What kind of people are they? Why do they worship there? Do they have other options but choose to stick to this place? If so, why? Those were some of the countless questions on my mind as we made way to the next location. And here we were, at the headquarters of Sagbama Archdeaconry after visiting two churches under it. There was some breath of fresh air seeing this particular church as it is their major town and with a better edifice than the previous two. Let's have a look. Welcome to the headquarters of Sagbama Archdeaconry, St. Barnabas Anglican Church. Um, I would say it's a beautiful environment, a little bit better than some other places we've been to, but let's meet uh, one of the curates in this uh, local church. Well, sir. Yeah. Uh, what's your name? My name is uh, Reverend Christopher again. Eh? Reverend Christopher, so um, tell us about your church. Um, the inside is not looking so good. Tell us about the uh, worship here. Let's go inside. I can see the church is under some kind of construction. It's like uh, the old building is phasing out for a new one. Yes, yes. The, we are doing a, a under. We are making under building. another structure. The other structure, yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the old one is making way gradually. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is good. That is. That means the church is growing. Yeah, we are managing. Okay. So what is your? What is the? The, the number number of the uh, the population of the okay. what is it like? Both the youth and the children we have almost three hundred. About three hundred. Okay. Okay. Persons. Okay. okay. Uh, for a hot part of the the arch decking, it's a good one. Can you show us around, sir? This is the this old is the old building. Yeah. So uh, how long how long has this construction been on? It's over to six years now. Six years. Mm. Wow. Lack of money. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a target like you want to finish this building? Yeah, there's a target, but there's no money now. But, but what's the plan for raising uh, money? We, to roof now because we don't reach the roof level. Yes. Uh, but there's no money. That's the reason why otherwise for them. You can see the, 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 the construction still has lots of work, uh, still needs lots of money. Uh, a lot is ongoing already, a lot has gone down from what I can see and a lot still needs to be done for this building to, to come up and to become what uh, we have envisioned it to be. So we pray that God will help us to complete this work, sir. Amen. Thank you. So let's go see the school. Okay. Yes. So we are in the school premises, still in the compound of uh, the St. Barnabas 
Anglican Church. <laughs> it's a modern school. Yes, it's a modern school. So this is the head of the school. What's your name? Well, I'm um, Mrs. Elizabeth Andaibe. Andaibe, okay. Uh, this is a basic school. Yeah, is it just nursery, nursery primary? Um, just nursery and the primary. So how many classes do we have here? We have about five classrooms here, then other two over there in the church. Okay, church has some classes. Yes. yes. How long has the construction? This is just taking place a few months back because the school started, I think 2020, the year on the 14th of December 2020. So we are just about three, uh, let me say two tenths now. When we finished in St. Barnabas, we couldn't go further because it was getting late and we had other things to do. Besides, we had seen as much. The following day, we were obliged to visit one more place. This is because, as we learned, the church holds some historical background for the diocese. So, even though we were pressed for time, we made our way to Bulu and Gyama. We were led to St. Paul's Anglican Church, Bulu and Gyama, headquarters of the Archdeaconry. There, we met with Venerable Arinze. Welcome to St. Paul's Anglican Church, Bulo Angiama, the Archdeaconry headquarters of the Bulo Angiama Archdeaconry, still under the Diocese of Western Azon. So, uh, compared to where we've been before, other places we've been before, this is quite a big one, quite a huge one, and quite a beautiful one. But uh, this place holds some history uh, for this diocese. So, let's meet uh, Reverend here. Reverend Venerable. <laughs> Okay, very good. Is it Dalu sir? Very good places. Okay, so you 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 tell us um, what we need to know about this place. Okay, this uh, this Saint Paul's Anglican Church, uh, Blangama, precisely was founded in the year about 1909. Wow. 1909 is uh, about uh, over 100 years, about 112 years old, as we are talking. As the history had it, that uh, the missionary that came to Patani to plant our Dazisan headquarters, the Cathedral Church of St. Matthew, uh, used here as a teaching center during those years. And um, we can see that uh, uh, the church here, the primary school you can, you can see beside here, it was called CMS, CMS um, uh, School. Anglican Church Bulangama. And uh, the originally the church we are having here today started up front, a copy up front, a copy they call the quarter, a copy quarter up front. A copy quarter. Okay. It's still and in this place. It's compound? still here, it's still in uh, uh, okay. end in this place. Okay. And uh, here precisely was a uh, known go earlier. They, uh, they okay. take care of Sana, uh, we are evil spirit. Uh, uh, it is tough people, but uh, the community uh, gave the, this place to the church and the church started in uh, sixteen to this moment. Actually, I was posted uh, to this place some years back, um, about seven years ago. And uh, when we come here, you can see the old church. Yes, I can see it right yes. in front of me. Yeah, yes, uh, and we God being our helper. We, through the former bishop, laid the foundation of this place where we are right now. And uh, the, this place was dedicated 2020 December by the, wow. our archbishop. Yes, okay. It's quite new. Yes, it's quite new. Yeah, so, this is what you can see here. Behind here, you can see the vicarage. Okay, there's a uh, vicarage there. behind here. Okay. Uh, show us around, show us the old church and the, uh, the vicarage, the school. Okay, so this is part of the structure of, old of the church. old church. Yes, yes. Okay. Of the old church. 
Are we using it as classroom? Oh, we now? use it as classroom for primary schools now. Do we want to preserve this or we're just leaving it for the purpose of the school? You know, what we have in mind is to uh, restructure this place for school purpose, okay. extending this place okay. up and making sure that here we contain at least two classrooms. Then right in the front of the church, we have a plan to, to you know, to build a school block in the front of the church. And before we left St. Paul's Anglican Church, something caught my eyes and I remembered I saw the same thing in some other churches around there. So I noticed uh, something common with the churches around here and um, we want to know about it, uh, that is this particular object. Uh, as I'm looking at it, it looks like a gas cylinder, but I understand it's meant for something entirely different. So sir. Uh, what, what you are seeing here is uh, in the, is a, uh, not, uh, it's a belfry, we call it belfry. Belfry, where before the church commences, there was somebody, the sexton of the church, we hit the bell before the church commences. And but uh, the originally, that is supposed to be a build, a bit of is a tower in some of our churches, in Grand communion all over the world. You see it, it will be sort of attached, attached on top of the church, yeah. or some build it separately. So this is the work of that thing you are looking at, we call it Belfry. When we were done in Bulangama, we had other places they wanted us to see. But for time, so we called it a day. There is always a new atmosphere at the emergence of a new leader. While putting this short documentary together, the Diocese of Western Izo happened to be welcoming a new bishop. The Right Reverend Victor Ebibade Okboru, having spent his years as a priest in the Diocese of Lokoja and as the chaplain to the Most Reverend Emmanuel Ebunu, he was consecrated at the Cathedral Church of St. Peter Asaba by His Grace the Most Reverend Henry Ndokuba. Primate Anglican Church of Nigeria. Before his enthronement proper, the lovely people of Western Izo had to welcome their new shepherd to his diocese.
During his enthronement, Bishop Oboru understood there's enormous work to be done, but he was ready. There are some areas of our life that we need to conquer. Our aim is one, to advance the kingdom of God and to depopulate the kingdom of Satan. Western is not. We are the least. Sorry if I use that. We are the least. We've not been able to provide the house for our church. Not because we don't want to do it, but because we don't have it. There are many challenges. But I want to tell you that if by the grace of God we agree to work together, who will we achieve it? Who will make it? Who will conquer? As far as the church is that ordinary we cannot do anything. But I count my numbers and I walk with my numbers. If the big man wants to do something for us, praise God. If he doesn't do we do what do we do? My bishop can tell you that every station I go, I start with the church of Jesus. Not because there is one, but because I believe it is the work of God. And if the people of God are educated, they will kill you doing it. And so, brethren, first, we want to talk about our spiritual What will it profit us after the suffering? After all this, and then you didn't make heaven. May the Lord help us to give us. his spiritual father was there all through together with Bishop Oboru's new Archbishop the most reverend Cyril Odutemo they gave words of encouragement believing that being sent by God Bishop Oboru would do exploits leadership in the church requires somebody who is loyal to God and therefore who will give priority to what is on God's mind as priority and Victor is that kind of person and I pray that his leadership will usher the diocese into a new phase of commitment to the Great Commission and to discipleship. He should remain first a Christian before he's a bishop. The position should not lead him into anything that is contrary to what will honor Jesus. Uh, Bishop Victor Oboru is sent of the Lord. The Lord chose him. And of course, I'm quite convinced that his ministry will make monumental progress in this diocese. We are praying that in no distant time we will see this come to pass. He is humble, evangelical, from the salmon I have heard, the Lord will take him places. I'm very convinced. If you continue to evangelize until you see results, you shouldn't be discouraged by the terrain. You shouldn't be discouraged by initial reaction of people. 
We know that God sent him. He will win souls for Christ because there is much room. A lot of communities don't have our church and uh, the gospel needs to move. So there is much for him to do. My message to everybody is to be faithful to God. If God has said anything about you, it will come to pass. It doesn't matter who is fighting you. God is still God. The throne is not empty. God bless you. It wouldn't be an understatement to say that the bishop of the missionary diocese of Western Izo would need help. The big question is, where is the help coming from? So uh, we've been able to visit some churches in Sagbama Archdeaconry of the Diocese of Western Izo in Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. We can't go all around the whole place is this is just the little we can show you of what is happening around there the state of uh, the local churches uh, in this place uh, this is a river part of river niger uh, this all around it's like it circles the whole of this uh, sagbama dagwabiri pantani and the rest of them uh, so we just want to let you know what goes on in some of our missionary dioceses. My name is Charles Philip Wakalam. Bye bye. I asked myself while filming this video, why? What is so special about seeing these churches? But another question that came to my mind is when you hear the word mission, what comes to your mind? When you sit in your high-class, state-of-the-art churches with super air conditions, digital projectors, line array speakers, leather pews, and all other comforts we enjoy in our big churches, do you ever think of your brethren worshiping the same God in places where they can boast of good wooden chairs to sit. These churches in remote areas need help. The help they require can be found in the big churches.